what's up? Yeah, the chat's going to have that little bit of a delay. And I may not have it, actually. Let's see if we can do this on the fly. Where everybody's trying to roll in anyway. We might break it, but whatever. I may have to resize it or something, but we'll see. Of course, it may not work. Again, on this view. Well, glad to have you, Charles. I was just trying to figure out the chat thing here. Like last time I had to shut it all off and everything and uh, it caused a bunch of issues. It was all doubled up and everything. So we'll see if it catches up and doesn't do the double thing. All right, so it looks like it is going for everybody. Good deal. So yeah, we do have the, that, I talked about that fan controller last, I want to say it was like last weekend or something like that. So, and made very good progress. And there's my boy, Fred Rico. I know he's working on some other stuff with, um, auto discovery for it because at this time we can't do auto discovery with it so um there's a few different little things that that and that's just that's a regular root beer by the way so um i won't make that joke but what i was gonna say so yeah Federico is gonna be working he, i know he's working on some stuff and I'll just say he's going way out of his way. So if you, you do see him out there, uh, he, he's, I probably mess up his name. FL, uh, I think it's EFE. Look, I got to go look it up. Um, EFFELLE. -L -L -E. And he's the one responsible for getting everybody to like uh, auto discovery again. But. He's trying to get some other stuff going with the fan controller, but the crazy part is he doesn't have any uh, Tuya MCUs to develop on, so it's kind of like he's developing in the blind, so I definitely have to give it to him. I've been actually trying to think of a way I, we can make like an emulated Tuya MCU for him to help develop things on, so. I always wondered what the, na what the name was. I see, I see that now, so. But um, so, yeah, if everybody is not does not know what the fan controller is and I, I will say that basically uh, the the I've been looking for one of these a long time. I mean, we've been we I, I wanted something like this and it's um, let me see if I can pull this window over here without it being crazy bright. Let me get my stuff fixed up again. So, I it's let's see if I can get a better picture. I, well, I'll just show you. But it's basically um, I know it's, at first glance some people are saying, "Hey, it's you know forty five dollars." Well, if you take a look at let's just look at say you know a Z Wave fan controller. Well, some of the Z-Wave fan controllers, you're looking at $42, $45. Uh, you know, some of the home seer ones, uh, $53. And those don't have dimmers in them as well. So I did find it very competitive in pricing, com considering it does have uh, dimmer and fan control buttons. And also, yeah, the the the... The replacing the capacitors on the iFan 03 is definitely not for everybody. And then trying to locate it in a place 
that you that's going to be hidden from I don't really want that box like on my ceiling or something. Luckily, I had one fan. Uh, I was able to put it in the like, I guess that's the I don't know, I call it the pan, whatever the, the rose, the mount top. And it's this is just a one. It's really what it should be. It's just like take the switch out, swap it in. Boom, you're done. Now, the only thing I will say, and it's a it's kind of being, me being nitpicky is most of the houses that I've been in that have separate light and fan controls, they typically have a two gang, they, they typically have a two gang plug, not plug, two, two gang switch box. So you're going to put this in, you're going to have a, a blank. Well, the typical average user that, you know, don't think of us, the typical average user is going to be like, well, what I put another, they got to put a blank or something else. Now, I immediately want to jump to, oh, well, hell, I've got two switches in there now, which I do have one like that, where I've got two just regular smart switches. Well, then I'm going to leave one of the smart switches in and just have it as a Wi-Fi button to, like, maybe set different scenes or turn the lamp on or whatever it might be. Um, yeah, I know it said that for the exhaust fans. Um and I'm assuming the reason being those fans aren't like exhaust fans like in the bathroom or probably not designed to be change their speed based with the capacitors. Now, I'm sure someone in here is more of an electrical engineer than I am. I'm not. I just play one um, with a little bit of Google. So. Yeah, I, I I have not tried it, and I'm not going to. This is really just a ceiling fan controller, and I, I really have no need for an exhaust fan in my bathroom to be low, medium, and high. Or I just I just really need it to be on and off. So, um, so why would you, I'm curious? What would you need it for a fan speed in a bathroom? I guess I haven't seen the. I've never seen one that's it's. In a bathroom, you normally you've had light fan, and then you know sometimes sometimes heat in this region. Uh, and I live in South Louisiana, South Louisiana, uh, not South, South United States in Louisiana. Can't even talk tonight. So yeah, and I would definitely say I've had one house, and I I, I really miss it. Had one of the massive. Uh, attic fans where you'd turn the light switch on and that fan would just suck the entire house out in a matter of like 20 seconds, especially if you started burning French fries or something like that. So, um, so yeah, it's really designed for a, a ceiling fan and yes, it does have capacitors inside. So it is a, um, I'm pulling up some, I took some photos of the internals of it. It does have capacitors inside of it, so and they are going to be sized for uh, 120 volt US. So you're not going to have to go and start replacing, uh, taking it apart, and soldering capacitors and trying to trying to find capacitors, and then you find out your capacitors don't fit because the AliExpress or eBay changed the size of the thing. Um, so yeah, it's definitely going to be so this is the kind of the insides of it here and it's all packed in a one gang so and you they there's multiple relays in here and if i go to yeah you can see the i gotta let me turn on my i knew i was forgetting something when i started doing my little i need a checklist like a pilot or something um so yeah, there's multiple relays in here that flip in all these different uh, capacitors. It's actually pretty cool the way they did design this. Um, it's, you can see right here, it does have, yes, that is correct. Just like with the iFan, you'll set the uh, fan you currently have, set the pull string on high. And typically, like if I do it in that case, um, I will pull, like I've done it on my iFans, I'll pull the, uh, you know, you break the little piece apart and make the, the chain really short 
on the uh, fan, and that way, you know, that no one is pulling the 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 fan. I, mean, I guess you could change, you could mix in. I don't know what that would do. I think it would make it get slower, but you could mix in stuff. Um, so, yeah, that's that's the uh, the beast, and uh, it's. I was just trying to see. Um, I had a better. You might see a kid picture or something here, but no big deal. That's the little MOSFET for the di the dimming. Um, that's the top of it. Top of it. Oh, that was the jig I was using. So uh, I should have a picture. Yeah, and there's the uh, the Tuya MCU on it. And for the ones that don't know what Tuya MCU, I'll try to explain a little bit what the Tuya MCU is. Um, the Tuya MCU, just think of it, you have, it's MCU, microcontroller, is, think of it's, there's two chips that control everything. So it's kind of like two, two pieces of firmware. So you've got the ESP chip that runs, of course, out of the box, the stock Tuya firmware, but then you have another chip that, uh, that's the ESP chip, and then you have the other one that's a Tuya MCU. And that one has more GPIOs. Because for all the LEDs this thing has, it does the dimming, it does the fan controller, etc. Yeah, now I'm not sure on the light. I saw that the question on... It looks like uh, 150... Now, I was curious always when they say 150 watts. I'm assuming it's 150 true watts of led which that's a lot really uh if that if that's true 150 watts for led um i'm not sure what it compares to on um let's see let's see what one of their other treat life dimmer and no um i i actually paid and just out of curiosity i did pay for this i saw this fan controller, we we're talking about it. So I did buy this. Treat Life is not sponsoring nothing about this. Um, so it's kind of all, I just thought it was a cool product. Um, what are they, what is their, their dimmer? Um, I, it seemed pretty comparable. They don't really say in their, in their, their dimmer. Um... Does it show right here? That shows 1250 watt for their single, but oh, there, look, there's their dimmer. Probably it looks the same thing. Max 150, oh, 400 watt incandescent, but who's using incandescent, right? So, um, so it seems pretty comparable. So if, let's just take a look at the thing. I want to jump, let's just jump straight to it, right? Um, let's see. These style dimmers are really annoying. The little touch, uh, I, I like the, you, as, as probably everybody knows, the, I like the Martin Jerry ones. Um, yeah, that's a lot of, 150 watts of LED, that's a lot of freaking light. That's a lot. So, um, but yeah, so I like the Martin Jerry ones a little because there's no Tuya MCU to deal with. And that because I like to be able to do crazy projects with them. So um, now they don't have the little touch panel. I know a lot of people like the touch panel because it's quick just to jump in. So and you know, it's just kind of a preference. Uh, let's see. I need to turn, I need to do a button for my, my light eventually one day. Oh, we just talked about you for a little bit for Frederico and that was it. We just, you know, you'll just, you can watch that later as we, we talk bad about you, Frederico. So, um, let's jump in and I will show what this thing actually looks like in action. Let's just see what the, what the LEDs, I mean, I got to fix my, my zoom. One day I'll get a real camera with a manual focus and zoom on it. So I won't have to mess with this. I got it upside down, I think. I guess you could mount it any way you want. 
So it is a regular decor style and they do come with a, um, it does come with your, just like other dimmers, your little screwless face plate. And so it, it will fit in the other decor stuff. Um, but the, this is the one thing I do have, I do, that's annoying and I'll show you is my annoying thing is I should probably apply power first. The lights are very dim on it. And I, I don't mind that uh, because it's not going to, I know a lot of people have going to have these in like bedrooms and stuff and you don't want some blasting LEDs across the room. So, um, so yeah, the, the, once you push the light and you can see at the, see at the top, it's got like a little, and I do have, I left a sticker on this. You can, maybe we should peel the sticker off, right? A bunch of stickers. So when you do push the light, it does this like little animation showing the dimming level. And then it just has that one little LED. And like I say, it's very faint because it's through back through that white plastic. Now, the only thing it's annoying is you know, when you come in here and you can, you know, you can change the dimming level by just pushing the minus. I don't know if you can hold it down. Yeah, you can hold it down. It slowly goes up. But the only problem is like right now the, the, the light is on, but the fan is off. Well, if I turn the fan on and now it, it, it's, it does that every other light for the, it, this is showing it's on speed one. And it is as something I didn't cover. There's four speeds. So I'll get to my opinion on that in a bit. But if you push the plus and see that's fan speed two, there's three and then four. Well, say you've got it on fan speed three. Well, hey, I want to change the dimming of the light with on, for on the faceplate itself. Well, the way you have to do that is you have to, the only way I found do it, you have to push the light and toggle it, and then you can get back to dimming mode. Now, I don't know if maybe you can hold it down. No, that turns it back off. So... And the same thing, so these the little minus and pluses, they are in the previous mode you last toggled from the faceplate, I believe. I don't know if it changes if you did it remotely. Um, so that's, that was one little minor annoyance on those, but it's just like I say, it's being picky. Um, and no, Boiler Boy, that is the one reason why I like, one of the main reasons I like the uh, Martin Jerry dimmers, because you can do your long press, your multi-press. Like for instance, last live stream, I did show putting my little fork firmware and doing a template and you can get the six actions out of each button. So you could have a Martin Jerry dimmer with 18 different actions off of those three buttons. Because of the way these dimmers are, that the majority of the dimmers are their Tuya MCU. The actual buttons are tied straight to that Tuya MCU. And so the ESP chip never sees them. So you, you're doing, when you're setting switch modes and button presses it's doing nothing because the ESP, uh, never gets those. It, it never sees them because the Tuya MCU is handling them. Now I've seen a couple people actually, do some buttons on the faceplate of their dimmer and they actually hardware modified them and soldered them to the Tuya MCU, not to, to do the ESP chip so they could get some button presses out of them. Um, so, so yeah, all those little functions that are like those double clicks and all that, everything that's all built into the firmware of the Tuya MCU it has nothing to do with the ESP chip. Like literally, you can have this ESP chip totally wiped, no firmware on it, no Tasmodo, no nothing. This thing will still work. It'll still dim. The only problem is you'll see a red LED because it's showing you the ESP chip is dead. So, um, what was your question? Uh, the talking about the uh, buttons. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. Now that's my next and Mark here, right? Going right into my other thing um, is they did four fan speeds, as you see, one, two, three. So there's four fan speeds, five states with off being the fifth state. And they, I think they did that because of, there's so many different like little variants of fan capacitors. There's like that four, there's the six, there's the 5.5, there's some of them come with fives. And, and so I think what they did is they just said, Hey, we're going to cover everybody. We're going to not do three. We're going to do four speeds. And that way some, you know, someone will find a speed in there that makes them happy for the most part. And I think it was just down to cutting down any kind of complaints. And so they just did four speeds. Now, the problem with that is I've done a bunch of look, looking in the code and everything. And as you just mentioned, Mark is an MQTT fan. There's no, there's only three speeds. And then we were looking in the Google assistant code because I found another previous GitHub issue and it's hard coded for just three fan speeds as well there. So like if you're doing your uh, voice assistance, um, but that's not to say, I don't, I don't know the Google or uh, the Amazon voice assistant API code. I don't know if they support outside of home assistant. Do they support more than three fan speeds? I don't know. Uh, so, uh, maybe if this be, we get become uh, we ask enough, there's enough of us saying, "Hey, we need four. You know, it seems to me that there should be like five, at least five fan speeds in Home Assistant, and just change them to. I don't. Maybe we could. You know, do you can keep the three like medium, low, and high, but then if you want to go more than that, it would just change it to five speeds, like one, two, three, four, five, and that and call it a day. Um, so that's what. And maybe if enough of enough of us ask for the feature, it would be great. So, um, but with, with with that said, if I can find my window here, uh, nope, I have it on one of my. Let's close this guy. Thought I had it open, but I'll just open it. So we are going to talk. I want to did want to talk about the uh, how uh, like the it does come. I know the big question is is does it come with the uh, blocked firmware? And yes, it does come with the blocked firmware. So. Um, but it now a couple of things I was playing around with, and I'm, I'm not the biggest person on GUIs, as you know, for for Home Assistant. Uh, I know many many of y'all are more. I just don't use the GUI a lot. We we use a lot of automations and um, mainly automations, and then a little bit of wall control mixed with a little bit of um, voice assistant control is kind of our thing, for the most part. So see if I can find a size. So it does work. I guess I should pull up this again. So it, what, what I did here is because of it only has the three speeds, I dropped a speed. I think I dropped number two out. And so it's just going to be one, three, and four. Um, but it does work, as you can see, if we can change it to low. Yeah, see, I, okay, I did, I dropped the first one out. That's what I did, the low, the low. So I did, I kept two, three, and four. And so it does work, as you can see, it did set it there. Boom, it goes to uh, medium, and it goes to high. And I will leave in, I'll copy all, I'm gonna show it, but I, I, I will leave all the description stuff on how I set this up. And just keep in mind, it might change. It might get easier. It might get to auto discovery levels. Um, but this is going to be manual YAML for the fan stuff right now. And it's not nothing, anything crazy. And the dimmer side is just like your regular um, Tuya dimmer. 
it's gonna it, it actually works exactly the same they do the dimmer range stuff works you can see setting the brightness changes the, the uh, thing so um so pretty cool it does all one gang it does work and everything um now you do have to right as of now because of the block firmware you do need to flash it manually um, but luckily it is fairly easy I'll turn luckily it is fair it's fairly easy with because the Tuya module is very is is um, I'll get a little closer so there's not I know we talked about this on discord the other day there's not any um, I mean, I'm gonna get it a little flat so y'all can see it a little better without glare there there's not any um let's say capacitors or resistors next to the pins and i know you're probably looking at it already going hey wait there's a um there look at the bottom there's uart2 tx and rx well the dead giveaway there's not a uart2 i think it's uart0 and 1 on the esp but the, those do not go to the ESP chip. I believe those go to the Tuya MCU. So I did just the standard thing of attaching to RXTX. Now I did, I have a second one. I did flash that without an issue with the jig that I showed on the previous live stream. Um, if you didn't see that one, that was this little, that was the little jig here that, um, you just push it down on here with the little pogo pins and you, you just got to hold it down while you're flashing it. And I did flash a second one without any issue with the little, with the little jig. So, so that's, it was solderless. The one thing you do need to do for the ones that are, are going to be doing these is you see this, let me get my little pointer, trusty screwdriver, right? And I'm not left-handed. You see this in reset right here? And then there's that ground. Now, you if you don't want to use the... Because this is ground here on the Tuya module. And this is positive here. I did pin out the ground in 3v3. You can use those if you want. You know, you could just stick an open header in them. And if it would stay connected, it's fine. It would save you from soldering two things. So then you would have to only solder R, uh, TX, RX, and GPIO zero. And technically you don't have to solder GPIO zero, but you'd probably need about three or four hands because what you need to do is this in reset, you need to hold it to ground the entire time you're flashing it. Because the problem is while you're flashing it, the Tuya MCU will try to start talking. And it's just going to muddy, basically muddy up the waters and the ESP chip won't hear all the commands for flashing. So if you ground in reset all the time while you're flashing, it, it keeps that to your MCU in a reset loop and it stops it from booting and talking. And so that's the little trick to flash that guy. So you, if you solder all the wires up and don't do the reset to ground while you're flashing it, it will not flash. So... But other than that, it's a simple flash. You will need uh, there. Thankfully, that Frederico was so kind to do this uh, for me and everybody else. Is let's see if we can find it. Frederico would probably be faster than me, right? Pull request and closed uh do, 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 do. wow there's been a lot of pull requests since then Frederico. how about we just do frederick uh to you did it have to you in there
should be close, or was it be mer be merged, wouldn't it? I would say it's not gonna be for um for two uh two forty volts. I I would probably still continue to um set you know you, you probably have to use the, another type of fan controller such as the iFan. I know it's not the same form factor, but you don't have to change those um those capacitors. So um so yeah, this this kind of I know this if you're in a different country, you're probably like this is boring or whatever, but we aren't gonna do the whole thing on just this, by the way. So um, but yes, you will need to, it's one of the first two year MCUs that I found that it is using 90, not using 9600 baud. It's using 115, 200. So you, you will need to use set option 97 to hear the two year MCU. And I'm going to put all the, um, there's one rule I do and, um, the YAML and there's the DPID for the fan and the dimmer and all that i'll i'll put us all this in the description after the live stream is over um but it's basically kind of like here's the the commands you got to set like 54 and for module and then there's the dpids a dimmer range and then we actually have to send over the fan speed commands using the to you send but we do all that with uh the yaml stuff let's see if i can see it file editor you can see yeah see here's here's the the yaml for it right here and um so it you had to kind of it's kind of a little not to say a hack but it's just a little out of the box thinking i had to do to send the to you send stuff because home assistant doesn't have separate payloads for state and then command unfortunately that i know of and so i had to use these three ones and three twos and then i had to use a rule to publish the correct state right but it all works once you get it going so um so i know i just blew through a bunch of that if anybody has any questions uh feel free to uh hit me up on uh, Discord, if you have one of the fan controllers and you, you're getting stuck somewhere. But I guess, like I said, I put all this stuff in there. And I may, depending on if a lot of people really want that, I may do like a short little setup video on it, on how to do it. Because it's a really cool uh, product. And I know it'll help. It's something I've been looking for for a long time is a simple pop-in Wi-Fi so, uh, fan controller. All right, so what did I what did I miss? I was running my mouth like crazy. I was just trying to jump through it. Um, oh look, there's Sir Good Enough. What's up? So any crazy questions? Nope, nope. Everybody's got it. Good deal. And uh, I'm I'm. Gonna look. I want to look at the fan. Uh, one thing I do want to look at. I want to look at the fan speeds on mine using the see how many amps the fan pulls with the pull string, and then I want to look at the different speeds to should help me pick where I can get those original three speeds. I really don't need four speeds on a on a fan. So, um, but so. The other thing I thought was cool, let me move this stuff out of the way. Is I don't know if there's any um, any big Shelly fans out there, any Shelly uh, Switch fans. Not fans, fans, but actual um, people that enjoy the Shelly uh, products. I'm guessing they still sell them on Amazon. Yeah, they do. I don't know what they compare to on the different stores and stuff. Um, so, but 
So this will be right up your alley. Oh, well, curmud curmudgeon, if I can say it right. Um, I'll, when I go, it's not, I wouldn't say really off topic. We're kind of in between topics. Um, it just shows a blank message. Hmm. I have not seen that one. I've seen it where it like crashes. And this is that, if you're curious, the Shelly one link. And they also do have a bunch If if the, they have like Shelly, uh, the Shelly cloud, I think it is. And they have like a U.S. store. Uh, you can buy them depending on your country and stuff like that. Um, so I have seen it where it crashes and, but it gives you some sort of JavaScript error. And I've, but typically that was rebooting the, and it was one with the full supervisor and it, we had to reboot the whole system and the supervisor had fallen on its face basically on a, I think it was a Pi 4. I actually had to issue on one of the live streams on, uh, with one of the locations I do. Um, yeah, no problem. Um, basically it's, there's some, there's, I saw in actually one of the, uh, Tasmota or Tasmota, I know that's, that's very difficult to pronounce for me. Um, there, there was a GitHub thread for how to flash your Shelly's without using any, uh, GPIO pins and, that is one of the things that is very um, unique, I would say, about the Shelly. Is they do have, of course, that this is one of them here. If you haven't seen, that's the, with the case off of it. Is they do, the, this is the, the Shelly one. I got the top off of it. This is the top, if you hadn't seen one. This kind of goes on here like this. Oh, the other way. My bad. And they, there's a little, some, some of them have a little door uh, that covers. It has a little door on it and they do have the GPIO uh, pins exposed. And even if you go to their website, I know it's on here somewhere, but um Oh, I got to find got on the Shelly, like Shelly one. They actually have on documentation on the Shelly one. They, in several of them, they actually show you exactly the, uh, I don't think it's on here. I probably got to find it on the main page. They actually show you exactly like which one's GPIO zero, RX, TX, et cetera. Your device lit. Well, We'll step into that. I'll, we'll take a look at maybe we, I'm not understanding the exact thing. Um, hang, hang on to that one. And so they actually, it was cool part is they actually show you where, you know, what each of the, the products are. And I'm not, let, it's not letting me click. Oh, cause I'm on the, and I'm on the wrong screen, but they actually, they'll, they'll show you the pin out. Let's see. Shelly cloud. Shelly Cloud, Shelly One. Let's just look at the Shelly Two. Oh, that page ain't found. They change it? Nope. I guess we should probably go to the real page, right? Shelly One Pinout. Well, we'll get this one. This is the picture they actually have on their website, which has. The uh, actually look is linking to Shelly API docs. I'm sure it's down here somewhere. The picture of it. Yeah, see there, there's the wiring and there's the pinout of it right here. So it's kind of cool that they actually show you the exact pinout and how to flash it. And they even tell you it's a two meg flash and to use 3.3 volts. So it's definitely really open for developers on the Shelly stuff. Well, the Shelly 2.5 can be in several other ones. Let me move this fan controller out the way. 
the Shelly 2.5 can be a little bit of a pain to flash because if you look at the, there's the header right there and regular DuPont jumpers are not going to fit in, fit in it like, like, like the Shelly 1 or the Shelly 1 PM. And there's a couple different ways you can use, like I've used breadboard jumpers. I know several people have used um, like Cat5 cabling, like they strip it back and just use the solid uh, core from the strands on Cat5 cabling and then attach to that because these pins are real small and it can be a pain for some. And I, and I do know some people may be asking, well, hey, just don't flash them. There's plugins and there's MQTT built in. Well, I flash them because I want it to be the same. Because all the other Tasmoto devices that I, I want to flash the my Shelly switches, uh, just want to be the same. It makes it simple and makes it uniform for me. Now, hey, if you're using them with MQTT with the stock firmware, hey, that's great. And you don't maybe don't have to flash them. Um, but the cool part is, I'll show you, they actually have... This project here, a guy, I'm assuming, and I'll say individual, is, I need to go, I need to enable the chat on those other views because we turned it off. You can basically flash Tasmoto on your Shelly by just pasting in this URL It'll pull intermediate firmware and then pull Tasmodo, flash it to the Shelly, all without you touching it. You just need it to be on your network. It's pretty slick. And I'll show you. So right now, I have, this is, a, this is that Shelly 1. And it's just the serial output of the stock firmware and if you aren't familiar also with the Shelly's I, I don't really like their app too much it, it looks pretty but I don't the it's, I find it difficult to navigate and get around but the cool part about the Shelly's you just fire them up they put out their access point you connect to it you go and they got a little web server go put in your IP you know, IP address well, I guess you can put a static go put your access point using SSID and password, and then they can get on your network. You don't even need the app. And then you can go in and start setting up um, if you wanted to do MQTT. Um, I know this is the older uh, set, the older firmware. Yeah, so you can do enable MQTT. You can upgrade the firmware, etc. Well, the cool part is we're just going to take this URL and we'll come and open up a new, we'll go ahead and paste, let's just paste it in here. And you do need to change the IP address. I think it was 174 is what I had. I think it's what I had. Mm, yep, 174. I thought I had one of the windows open to it, but that's fine. It's going to go away anyway. So we'll open, I want to show you kind of what it does. You, like I say, you don't need to hook up the terminal to it, but I want to show you what the terminal is doing in the background. And let me bring this tab out so I don't have to, it doesn't get in the way. And I'm just going to press enter on it. And we put termite back up, Travis. Let me make sure it didn't time out on me. Settings, device reboot, device reboot. Yes, it should start. Okay, yeah, okay. I just want to make sure it's updating the terminal over here. All right. It's rebooting. Everybody's sleeping. And I'm going to go ahead and press enter on it and that you'll see it starting to you'll see it start doing some stuff here in a second 
it might make a liar out of me. I've done this about three or four times, just testing it. So, and it takes a few minutes. Hey, look, Dr. Z is in the house. There it goes. And it actually will download that intermediate intermediate firmware. And then it'll, you'll see it grabbing each piece of Tasmodo with that. And it flashes it straight to the Shelly without you having to use GPIO pins or nothing. So it's pretty cool. And then we should see there's Ta and you can see there's Tasmodo right there. And so it's autom it would be an access point mode ready to attach to your network and um, pretty cool without having to, I haven't done the 2.5 yet. So I guess we can probably do that 2.5 if you want. And uh, but I thought that was neat being, cause some of the Shelly's are a pain to flash. I know he has, he was gonna be doing more of them Looks like he's got the one, the PM, the plug. Oh, the plug would be cool because the plug, I've seen people actually pop, have to pop those open. There's no open pin headers in the plug. Um, I'm assuming he could probably do the same ones for like the Shelly bulbs and a few others that don't have the oh, the pin headers for the Shelly stuff. So you're gonna put your own firmware on it. So pretty cool little project. And the guy wrote that little firmware for it. So, um, Let's see. Um, we'll hook up that uh, that two point five. I haven't. Let's see if that two point five will work. I should have it on my network. Let's see. Yeah, uh, I, I will put all those, um, all my big notes on the, all my big notes on all the, the fan stuff. Yes, I will. I'll put that probably in this, I'll put that in the description of here. There's fan speed stuff may change based on Frederico doing auto discovery stuff. Um, but I, I only had one rule to do it. And this is all my notes and stuff. I'm just not going to look like this. But this is kind of the bulk of the settings basically here. And then this one rule to get it to post right to uh, Home Assistant. And like I say, you do have to drop. And I'll put the, um, the YAML for it as well. So, um, this, this one, I'll do the, this one. And you, like I say, you do have to drop one of the fan speeds because home assistant doesn't support that four speed. Um, yeah, I'm not putting it there yet, uh, because it still has a little bit of work. Um, so, but I, I'm a po I'll post it on the, the description of this. But because of the auto discovery stuff that could change and everything, um, well, we'll I'm still working with Fred Rico on some stuff with that. So before we do like a, an official publish per se. Um, but there's not really, like I say, it's now if for template wise to actually get the 2 MCU, there's no template for it. You just use 2 MCU. So... Oh, man, it ain't your day, huh, Frederico? Yeah, so I'll, I'll post it in the description of this. I know that feeling with the storm stuff. Um, let's see, I should have, yeah, that. The, yeah, we'll, we'll, there, this, I, I want to see if this is going to work. Here's that Shelly 2.5. Yes, there are people working on the, um, oh, Fred, I don't, did you, may have missed the part I flashed at Shelly 1 with uh, using OTA, flashed at the Tasmodo using uh, OTA. You may have missed that. 
I'm gonna do the I'm gonna do this other one. I haven't done the 2.5 before. Um, where is it at? And look close. Did I close the page? No, here it is. Shelling 2.5. We'll see if I can blow this one up. Ten and one eighty two. All right. Uh, yeah, we're, no, we were talking about the uh, putting uh, where I was going to publish any of the stuff for setting up the fan, the, uh, the dimmer, uh, the fan controller dimmer uh, thing. This guy. Where's he at? The thing we've been talking about all, all week, uh, Frederico. This guy, that, that fan dimmer thing. Um, I told him we were still working on, cause it might get really easy to set up. So we may, we're still working on possibly the fan stuff. So I, I didn't want to do any like official stuff. Um, yeah. And then there's even some other settings I found. There's actually dimming, which I want to play with. And I did document them. There's dimming modes. There's three different dimming modes in the Tuya app itself. So I wanted to kind of play with the dimming modes, which is a whole other deal. Because actually there's a dimmer range and dimming modes, and those are separate DPIDs that Tasmodo doesn't even know about. So, uh, but you don't really need to mess with them. But I want to see what they do. Um, let's see if that um, huge difference uh, with the... The, for a ceiling fan, there's a huge difference. They use, they, it, you want to use, it uses the capacitors to, and I got too many Tasmodo devices. Which one do I need to unplug? Yeah, it, I've actually played with, and I've actually played with, um, one of these, where is it? Uh, let's see, fan, let's see, fan smart switch. I'm sure I'll find it. They're ugly looking glass things. Yeah, here it is right here. This thing here, it was something kind of like this and it had like, fa like fan buttons. And eh, it wasn't exactly this one. This one might actually be capacitors in it. But I don't like those. Those glass things look funky, and they don't fit. They don't fit in um, normal boxes, and uh, with they only have like one. Like you have to have a single box to put them in. If you got multiple switches, then you got to start modifying face plates. And there was some I've I've messed with before, where it was. It it had a plus and a minus on it. See, these are actually high, medium, and low. And it just had like, a, and it actually, I opened it to look at it and it had a, just a MOSFET in it. And the problem was, as soon as you started hitting minus, the fan would make this horrendous buzzing sound. Um, yeah, I, I've, I got pictures of that, uh, Angus. Yeah, the light, the light is a real dimmer and it, it works just like a regular, like, the, just like the regular other two year dimmers. So, um, but yeah, let me pull up those pictures again on there. Uh, let me get down to it past all the kid pics, and then I'll drag it over there. All right. There we go. So that's the that's the jig thing I was using to flash it. But there's the two MCU. There's the board, and that's just that you can see all the LEDs on it. There's actually those set of LEDs. There's one for the light and one for the fan. Or I might have them backwards, but um, and that's the top of it it that's the that's the mosfet for the dimmer and then you can see the capacitors are in it these red blocks 
along with the relays. And I want to say it is just, it looks like just the three, there's just th uh, three relays in there and it looks like three capacitors. Yeah, because there's this one laying in here. There's a smaller one. It looks like there was another one on this. Yeah, there's looks like three capacitors with three relays. And that's maybe how they, using combination of them, got four speeds out of the three relays um, and the three capacitors. So it works, though, without having to change the damn capacitors so is that what else you want to see angus or is another part you want to see because typically in the fan there's yeah high is going to be straight through um Fan capacitor, if I can spell right, but I'm sure it'll fix it for me. Yeah, because the iFan 03 only has three speeds. So, and if I, don't quote me on this, I think it, high is going to be none of the capacitors in the iFan 03. And then on um, medium, I believe it's the is it two capacitors? I'm sure Sir Goodenough will, will correct me. I think it's two capacitors for medium and then one capacitor for low. I may have it backwards. And it's just one for medium. Okay, see, I, I thought I have it backwards. And then so it, it puts those capacitors in series and then the two. So it's basically doing kind of the same that you, if you go look in your typical um, fan, If you go look in your, in your typical fan, like usually it's in the light kit, you'll find this little block. And these do go out from time to time. It's kind of rare that I've had them. Um, they'll bulge and they'll go out. But the problem was in the iFan 03 was they had uh, this, the fan capacitors were like half the size of what they should have been for the 120 volt. So... And so that's why a lot of people, when they put in those iFan 02s and 03s in the U.S., and they're like, whoa, medium is like slow, and now low is like just totally unusable. And so that's when we started looking at the capacitor sizes and then changed them. So, um, which is a pain in, in the yin yang to change those fan capacitors yeah i'm sure it works great on where it's designed for work on 220 volts probably works great um just like how this if you imported i don't know if what's the rating on it does it say 120 on the back um yeah they just say 120 volt ac uh, I know it's like, I'm guessing if, if, if it would work on 220 as well, then the capacitors would be all the wrong size. So, um, yes, Michael Strawn. Yes, the these currently, as of this, they are PSK blocked. If you go look at the to your convert issues, they have a pinned issue. And they... They, the, it's a long, it's a good little read. Um, they talk about how the, with the, how the PSK format and how they've been working on it, how long it may take. I don't know, but there's a bunch of other guys in there working on it. And, um, you just don't know, uh, how, how long it may take. So, but it's, I, I, I go in every once in a while and go look at it and go see the, um, thing and we we kind of knew this go i mean because we got blocked out of two year convert the first time and that one was very short i think it was short-lived i from what i remember it lasted maybe four or five months before months maybe before we started seeing um devices showing up with block firmware and then of course it went down to the uh distribution channels and um but Luckily, this and, and really to be honest with you, with, with you, the only 
impact for me, at least for the most part, especially now with, if you have a 3d printer or if you know somebody with a 3d printer, you can print the little jig and you can do the two year modules with no, um, with no, you know, with no having to solder things, um, or, but that, but that kind of leaves us out on plugs and bulbs. I don't know of any bulbs with the, and if somebody does definitely let me know. I don't know of any bulbs that have the pins exposed on them and the plugs for the most part, I'm just trying to think the plugs for the most part are all pretty much glued. Um, now, I guess the old fallback, which is not a bad plug, is the Sonoff S31. It's a great plug. It has screws, and it's easy to flash with a, a clip or a little bit of soldering. And, uh, you know, that's just depends on what you want to do. So it kind of sucks for the plugs and the, um, the bulbs, really. Uh, yeah, I'll do the, uh, let me find, it's on Thingiverse. If you just go in, yeah, I love the S31s. If you go in and look for, I'm going to link it directly. If you go and look for the, this guy here. I'll link the direct one. And I printed it on the side just like he did. And it, I only think it took like 30, 20, 30 minutes to print. It was really, it's really small. Um, and yeah, so, and then I did have to find, uh, let me see if I can link these pogo pins. Cause I measured the, the, the height. I want to say it was like 25 millimeters for the pogo pins. And because some of the pogo pins are really small and big, let me find, let me see if I can find what pogo pins I got, and watch it be sold out. But at least I can give you the size, and you can start doing all your googling and stuff. Yeah, I'll share with uh, some of the plugs. Currently, there's still some plugs that are uh, flat that are flashable. But it's, but it's kind of like you don't know when they're going to start coming with block firmware. Um, yeah, exactly. It's, it, it's just, you just don't know. Um, they actually, look, they do have some in stock. But this will give you the size. I'm sure you can get pogo pins on AliExpress and whatever other websites. Um, but these are, yeah, th these are, yeah, there was 24 millimeters long in length, but also take note of the diameter. These did work. These did work for me. Um, so, I want to say he did talk about the diameter in here. I think, or maybe it was a comment or something. I forgot where I saw it. So, but those did, those did work for me on the pogo pins. Um, currently, the, if you want, that's current, like I know we're talking about plugs. It's going to be a sad day when these start coming blocked. Be a very sad day. Let me find them. Well, if I can get the link off of the. Oops. These guys here. And again, I have no affiliation with them. It's just some we found that work great. And they do have smaller packs, but it's $26 right now um, for, four, for a four pack. And they do have power monitoring. And they are, I want to say someone got some a week ago and they were still flashable. So 
Yeah, they do. They do have power monitoring. Um, let me show. I mean, I'll, I'll I'll pull up one. Um, I've got a few of them. Of course, when I would say I've I've got them, and of course because it's stand, you could put ESP Home on them or whatever. Um, but yeah, so it's just a, there's the BN Link plug. Um, and they do power monitoring, the standard stuff, and they work with auto discovery and the whole thing. So um, they have been on sale before. Uh, that is correct, Home Ace, but um, I don't. I, I I don't see them on sale all the time. They have they have been. They went on sale for a little cheaper than that. So, um, but um, the other. These, I know someone bought some last week. These don't have, um, I know we're talking about plugs and bulbs and what's flashable. These, we, uh, they flashed them using the current to your convert without any issue about a week ago. And like I say, it's going to be a sad day whenever those don't, those start coming blocked as well as the uh, plugs. Now, I don't know how many it takes, but I know there was a guy on here. Is it, if I'm saying it right, it was Liam or something. He had talked about, he made a, I don't know how big the order was. He made a big order from Zimmy Smart and he provided, he, he asked them to load his own firmware and they said, sure. And except they wanted a firmware that would test. I think he was getting a bunch of down lights or something. And, but he had to give them a firmware that when turned on, it would test all the, the five color channels at full brightness for so long. So they could do a little factory test before they sent them to him. But they sent uh, his, his firmware to, he was a, like a modified Tasmoda firmware on him, and they flashed a firmware for him. So he didn't have to flash him at all. Now, I don't remember if he said the quantity, whether he had to order like 50 of them or I have no idea. So, but, um, so yeah, the Lojas are still one of my favorites. Um, the, I want say the only negative on the Lojas ones is I, they, they have a design. I don't have a, I had to, I would go dig forever with the picture. There's a design, I think there's a design flaw of where they put the Tuya module and they uh, they have the antenna not in a good spot. So the there's it does not have as good of a Wi-Fi signal. Um, Tekken, I, that's going to be... I, I'll be honest with you, I stay away from anything Tekken. So I stay away from anything Tekken because Tekken has changed to all RTL stuff. So uh, for the most part which is not flashable at all at this time because it's just totally different chip set. So, um, yeah. So it, it's a roll of the dice. You may be able to flash Tekken bulbs. Um, if you see somebody, maybe they, someone may post in that CT to your convert. If they don't, you know, they're being blocked, but a lot of people are like, you know, some people are sharing that some aren't. So, um, I'm looking at the, I know we flashed it, uh, another, um, earlier that Shelly 2.5 and I'm trying to put it on the network right now. Um, well, yeah, that, I, I will say in my, and I, I, I hope I am wrong, but the reading some of the stuff they did and, and I think F Patrick's still in here, uh, Patrick DK, not the other Patrick. Um, let me type this password in right quick. Cannot type and talk at the same time. Definitely not a strong point in my So, 
Yeah, that would be cool. To, the only problem is if we did like a big, I thought actually thought about that, doing a big order or something from a company or whatever. But then it's having to ship stuff back out and the shipping cost doing an individual just sucks. And it would just increase the cost so much. And then then you start to get into the whole thing of missing packages and returns. And this isn't my day job. So, um, now some other website or somebody wants to do it. Hey, that'd be great. Um, cause that people would probably, I don't know what they would pay for a premium on it, but it just depends on, I guess, if two year converts working or not. Um, so yeah. Um, what else? I was going to do. We I went blank. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if they'll do that. I tried to do that one time with uh, with Ali Baba. Has kids shipping stuff now? Oh, you you shipping the Dig Uno boards? Okay. There you go. Put the kids to uh, kids to work, right? So that was that Shelly 2.5 that I just flashed without any wires. <laughs> you gotta be careful. You can't. You gotta watch out for the um, the Google bots and YouTube bots for certain words. So, uh, so what 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 stuff? What stuff are you? Uh, the Duke Uno are those those? Um, which one of those? I know what's his name. Um, oh, maybe old curmudgeon's still here. Um, he does a lot of 3D printer stuff. Oh, I can't remember his name. Like TH, TH3D or something like that. Yeah, this guy. Um, I know he was talking about um, on one of the live streams and I got on one of his streams and he got on one of mine, et cetera. And I know he was talking about doing, getting a, a plug with power monitoring manufactured and an open pin header on it. Kind of like those BN links kind of. Um, I don't know where he got with that, with the whole covid thing messing up supply channels and whatnot um i haven't talked to him a bit on that one uh i thought that was kind of be kind of cool i think his thing was uh a, a real easy way for someone to power monitor their 3d printers since that's kind of his thing is the whole 3d printers so um i don't know who he was getting to manufacture that or whatever Oh, so yeah, okay, those um I yeah, those queen lead boards, okay. So let me see. Let me see this guy here. Yeah. Let's see if I wanna see if this works. That Shelly two point five I think it's Shelly two point five is in here, maybe. I haven't looked in a while. Oh, it's just a Shelly two that's in there. I'm sure there's a way to search now, but I, nothing wrong with control F. Shelly 2.5. Module zero. And let's see what she does. Yeah, I still have my uh, Prusa I bought a couple years ago. So it's only showing temperature, not showing power monitor on the 2.5. I wonder if that's, I need the sensors build, but at least it flashed. So I think, I think I probably need the sensors build, I bet. Um, 
I don't know if, if uh, Frederico's still here. I think that's an I squared C build. Yeah, I think you do have to. Uh, it might, yeah, it might be a bit hot. I do think you need to calibrate that. Uh, to the, I didn't, of course, you know, you saw I didn't read. I just kind of boss hog through stuff. Um, I think there's a calibrate for the power for the 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 mont the temperature. So, oh, uh, so it always runs high. Yeah, I don't know if it's gonna flash the. Uh, I should have. I think it's just dash sensors. While we wait, so is a was it hot? Ace, you still here? I know we were looking at. You had some Lovelace issues. Home Ace. I'm gonna say hot Ace, but it's Home Ace. I was close. Yeah, we'll see if it uh, lets itself flash. It's rebooting. <laughs> uh, it actually cooled. It cooled off a little bit. Oh, look, that's weird. Now it's pulling in. Um, hmm, I hadn't played with the 2.5 yet on 8.3.1, but now it's picking it up as a VM V EML 6070. That's odd. Yeah, I may have to force something with the, but hey, at least it worked. It, it's just got some configuration stuff if I when I want to use it. Ain't no big deal. It's picking it up. I think that's the, the uh, UV sensor. It must be using that same address. Yeah, look, it's even 61. Yeah, it may not be. Um, let's see. Look, it's 79 outside at, a, at 945. I mean, still, it's it's a definitely a pretty night, right? So, it cooled off a little bit from a storm earlier, but uh, so and it it'll be a little bit cooler on the weekend. Look, it's only in the in the eighties. See, It'd be great. The next week is back to ninety five, with eighty percent humidity. So, tried tasmatizing my fan module. Keep getting a fail to connect. Waiting for a packet header. Yes, boiler boy. Did you did you did you jump in reset and let me unplug this so I don't short anything out. Yeah, it's a little it's a little warm. I was just touching it just to see how it was. It's a little warm. Yeah, that end reset and ground jumpered. It should. It's just a typical flash. But once you have that, it's the same same flash as always. Um, and you should be able to use Tasmatizer to flash it. Um, you should be able to use ESP tool, whatever you want to use to flash it. And as long as you... Yeah, and may, remember, I don't know if you, yeah, your R, make sure RX, RX goes to TX, TX goes to RX, and that would have been really cool if we could, if this wouldn't have came with block firmware, this thing would have been perfect. So it's kind of, but Treat Life for the most part has changed a lot of their stuff um, to uh, that new, they just, I guess they, they, they must blow through, they, they must sell stuff really well that this, they've cleaned out their supply channel. So, but at least you can get them open easy and they, this is a regular to your module. So home ace, does your wife all the time you spend on ESP chips? <laughs> um, it, it, it's fair and, and I'll, I'll, I'll all the time, I probably spend less time on ESP chips than she does watching TikTok videos. So <laughs> you be the judge on which one is uh, more beneficial to uh, actually completing a task or being useful. <laughs> so, uh, and no, I do not have that app installed on my phone, by the way. Uh, no, don't, don't, don't just... 
I just don't. The, there's, I don't know if it's a lot of hoopla or whatever, but go re, go look at some of the articles on the, the whole TikTok app and what it does, and it supposedly like sets up all kind of stuff on your phone, and it just just don't. Yeah. So, look, everybody else knows. If someone has TikTok on your phone, make sure they're on like a guest VLAN, please. I would just say that there. So, yeah, someone else was talking about, I saw on Reddit, someone posted a link about the Tuya app on an iPhone was, cop was copying the clipboard into the Tuya app or something. So... Thought that was kind of interesting. I don't use the Tuya app, so I I have it on another phone that doesn't have anything on it that I use. That I just use it to test with. So, um, but yeah, I saw that on Reddit. I wanted to save like in home automation that someone had found it the other day. So, um, yeah, you and me both with the no smart life stuff. What's up? Go ahead. My wife is asking about ice in the cup. Yeah, what was that at? Um, I went in the home assistant. I'm sure I won't be able to find it in. Um, <laughs> no TikTok. <laughs> Don't let me be the judge. Go do your own research on the uh, on the app. So, um, I sh I can't find the link. Someone was t they had an animation of it. Um, yeah, I, I probably tr very true on that. It has some decent content. I I don't I would say decent. I'm just gonna leave that there. Um, Let's see. Was it just the smart life? We say the word to you too much. Uh, so yeah, Kelvin, no, we, um, I'm just kind of hanging around. Um, I kind of went through everything already and we've been going right at an hour. So we're good. Um, the what questions you got? I know I was looking to see if Homeace was still here. He had some Lovelace questions. Like his Lovelace was like blank, and I was maybe try and step through it. I just don't use it a whole lot. Um, yeah, it's definitely not always true. I'm not always right on everything. I will definitely say that. Um, Yeah, and that's one I did think, William, about copying the clipboard. I don't know if, if they're trying to be bad doing it or trying to have it as a feature to copy some stuff in for you. I just don't know. Um, be careful. All right, Doc, catch it easy. Catch, catch you later. Um, the fan controller is a four-speed. Thanks for stopping in, Doc. It is a four-speed but Home Assistant does not support four speeds. So if you want to, you'll have to put three speeds in it. Um, and um, you'll just need to figure out a way. There is some other ways to do it, but you just can't do it with the standard drop down the fan. So yeah, I'll see if I can tune in then. I, I, I'm it seems like I'm always doing stuff on Sundays during the middle of the day. That's the only thing bad on my part. Um, yeah, it does have access to it. Uh, the soldering irons. Yeah, because once it has access to your clipboard, if you had a password in there or something... Now you're going to, it is definitely one of those things you get what you pay for. The, um, the hack, if I'm saying it right, hacko or hako, I'm sure I'm going to butcher it. 
Um, it's there's this one. It's I have this one and I love it. It's a great soldering iron. Um, it's that sucker heats up. I've probably seen it in a couple of my videos. That sucker heats up fast, and it works. It works great. But there is a little cheaper one. There is a little cheaper one on my list. Yeah, and that, I, I got a friend, a couple people I've known have had this one, and um, oh, the four thousand. Okay, the four four thousand. This is the three thousand. We'll look at the four thousand. Um, this is another one I have on my list. It's a little cheaper. It's you know, it's 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 half the price at uh, currently. I know prices change, especially now. Um, what is that one? That's the full kit. What is it you said you have? The Xtronic 4000? What's that one? Oh, wow. Is that the, oh, that's the hot air. Or is that hot air too? Is this kind of like maybe one you have? I've always wanted to get, eventually I may get one. So I'm sure eventually I will. It's always fun. So I have a weird fascination. I can watch the, uh, I can always watch people working on and doing soldering with hot air stations and it, the way it does. So yeah, the, the wellers are good as well. I've heard, um, actually I, I had, an old, I actually, I, I had just a single, I had a single, uh, weller that now some of the, some of the wellers you may see are expensive. I had one kind of like this, but it didn't have temperature on it. It was just a single stage, uh, weller. So I, I didn't really have any problem with that, with that guy. Um, and I usually just pick up a couple, um, sizes of solder depending on, what I'm working on because sometimes the, you know, the big fat solder is not going to work well. And then sometimes some of the thin solder, um, and I have a couple things of solder, have some soldering paste. Um, and I think this is 0 0.02. I like to use on, especially on like the, it, it's a little thin for some projects, but, uh, I like to use the thin solder. I don't tend to make as big as a mess. So, but of course, that's down to preference. Yeah, the that's the other one. The, I couldn't think of the name. TS one hundred. The little, I don't have one of those. The little battery powered ones. Uh, I'm sure eventually I'll get one because they're kind of cool for like field soldering and stuff. So. So yeah, there's all kind of good soldering uh, recommendations, um, but. Le oh, the lead-free soldering. I think I've all. I think I've. I've all. I've already kind of said what. I've always told that there's. I've always stuck to this. There's an old timer that told me years ago, and he was like, "Get the sixty. Is it this one? It's. I mean, it was telling me like this. I want to say it was this one. Um, this. It was like sixty-three thirty-seven or sixty-two. Yeah, 6040 was another one. I was at like part 40% lead. Um, so, yeah, I, I I know there's a lot of debate about this uh, the solder. I, I have not tried soldering that is uh no no lead. Um, I know Kester seems to always make some decent solder. Um, but to, the, depending on if you can find, there's there's some of the 6040 um, the soldering but do check the diameter yeah I, I've, I've heard that all around for good enough is just in yeah the rosin core is it, I've always heard that around just stick with the lead and I know there's always been some stuff of like buy up all the solder you can you know because you never know when they're going to totally ban it so um, but yeah and I use a um, it's a little high for me Sometimes, especially if I'm videoing, I know a lot of you don't have that problem. Um, 
years of that. I use one of these. I use one of those little guy with the, the clips. I did like the clips on them because you can tighten down the clips and also the clips are, have a rubber coating on them. So then you can, um, plug in boards with it, holding them and not have to worry about it shorting stuff out as long as you didn't cut holes in your little rubber, uh, coating on your clips. And they got a bunch of different little, uh, helping hands, but you could probably drive yourself nuts looking at helping hands stuff on Amazon or AliExpress or whatever. Um, but definitely makes a difference to get, uh, some helping hands of some sort. And most of the time, and I know you always think, Hey, bigger is better. Get the most hand. I, I didn't, I can tell you on this one, I've got is four. It's, I got it under the desk. I've never used the four hands before. I've used, I think three at most. So it, it is come up a little high for me, but I'm fine with it because I have a, um, one of those lamps with the big magnifying glass that I look down through and then I have my camera mounted to that. So, but, uh, if I'm trying to do any soldering, but yeah, so, and don't, don't there, there's tons, I'm no soldering pro by any means. Um, so yeah, I, I, I have been soldering and soldering for probably since I was a kid, but uh, am I doing it totally right? I don't, I don't know. So, um, yes, it actually, it's funny. I actually, I do use, uh, regular Play-Doh a lot of times. Um, what do they call it? Like the blue tack or something like that? I think they call it. Yeah. Blue tack putty or something like that. Some people use blue tack to solder with. Um, I'm sure there's a different name for it for soldering. Um, actually, I do use actual. I've used real Play-Doh for it because uh, I didn't have any of the uh, the the the. Is my show the right name? The reusable. Yeah. So like the little blue putty for let's let's just see blue. Putty solder. Yeah, I guess it does come up the same way. Um, yeah, that's basically like if you've got like <clears throat> you're trying to solder like say a, like a big pin header or something like exact like resistors and you can't find a way to hold tension on it and in, and you're trying to do like one hand here and then hold it in the board. It's just so much easier to just sticks that blue tack on there and it holds it, solder it and then pull the blue tack off. Um, yeah. See dollar store poster putty. Um, yes. It, and I, I've used actually, like I said, I've actually used regular Play-Doh because I have kids and I usually go steal a little thing out of the Play-Doh. And as long as I don't get, make a mess with it. So, but yep. Whatever you can find to, I've seen people use tape. I've, there's a tons of different stuff I've seen people use. Um, a lot of times I'll use like if I'm soldering, I, I don't have one, but I have one behind mine, uh, behind me. And I've showed it in a couple of my videos is I'll, if I'm soldering like the little I squared C sensors and same thing for like the Wemos, I will actually solder them on a breadboard. And so I'll stick the pin headers in the breadboard and then stick the board on top of it. Um, so that's a, a, a little tip. I don't know if I have, I'm trying to remember when I did like that. Um, I probably did. No, don't play all. I probably did this one here. Nope. Where's it number five? Of course, one I didn't put chapters on. Yeah, look, see, there's, there you can see the, um, 
there's the Haco or Hacko. I think it's Hacko. I think it is pronounced. So, um, yeah, you can actually see how quick that thing, look how quick it runs up on the temperature. And I, 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 you can see I'm doing that unedited. I was not fast forwarding the video or anything. It, it runs up fast. And so, yeah, I, I usually take the, um, the little chips and stick them on, stick them on there and then just solder them straight in. And that, that one's not the, um, and use the breadboard. It worked great for doing that, especially like, especially if you got a lot of pins, like on a, on a Wemos uh, D1 mini or something like that. So, so that's, and that keeps everything straight for you. But all right. Uh, anything, I guess I, I don't see home base here anymore. Let's see if I got any messages from anybody waiting to hit me up. Uh, yeah, nope. Okay, cool deal. Oh, there's home base. Okay. I, I put you to sleep. That's what it was. To flash the DS03. What is, I don't know what the DS03 myself is. Um, DS03, it sounds like a treat life. Bad soldering on GPIO zero. Oh, so the, uh, but the thing we were just talking about, <laughs> see, I don't even know the model number of these things. I guess it's not, it's, it's not as bad as Amcrest with their model number. And it's like TM 179 E2B 47 XC. And you're like, what the hell? Um, yeah, it, it's actually, I would say pretty simple because, um, well, Boiler Boy can tell you, it's actually pretty, it's pretty, I would say it's pretty simple. The only thing that is, um, could be difficult. Yeah, everything is, no, it's not always simple. You don't know how, how long I spent messing with this, uh, fan switch. And then, um, then I had something backwards and, and every time you pressed, the dimmer, it turned the fan on and yeah, it, no, everything isn't just simple. So, um, but yeah, every, I mean, it's, it's no, don't, do not use a regular dimmer on a fan, by the way. If, if you do go set it up in the driveway in a controlled environment where in case something catches on fire, do it out there, please. Um, but, um, so yeah, I mean, it's got four screws and the faceplate comes right off and I'm, I got a little, let me show it a little higher. Yeah. Don't use a regular, on a regular ceiling fan and a regular dimmer. Um, that's not, don't do that, please. But yeah, it's just four screws. This faceplate pops right off. Now I did take mine off. You don't have to do that. Um, the, that the little green board is facing this actually sits about like this. Yeah. You can actually see the LEDs face that way. And, um, the pins are all right there and you, you can, you can use these other little pins here for 3.3 volts and ground. And you would just have to solder RX and TX. That probably would be the most difficult part is to make sure your RX and I, I, I did not solder this with the best at all. I'll show you. I, I am not shy at all. I will zoom into this and show if it wants to stop shaking because I got that zoom that close and I'll fix the focus. Is make sure the um, the RX and TX are not bridged. So yeah, mine was blocked too. I have two of them. So if that means anything, <laughs> I know I, I bought one and I was like, wow, this thing's great. I got to put it in a bedroom and I want to put it in another one. So I bought a second one. So, um, yeah. And you're welcome to see my serial numbers because they will not be in the cloud, by the way. Um, yeah, you can't, 
to you convert these at this time? Um, I know we talked about if the jig and stuff. If you have a 3D printer and some pogo pens, you can print the jig and it's fairly easy. But you will need to do, and I'll put this all in the description, you will need to do that uh, reset button. Not reset button. The uh, reset jump to ground. Side note, there is a reset button at the bottom. If you wanted to really hold that, it's the same thing, but it's a pain in the butt. So def just use the jumper. Uh, yeah, I'll put all of that down in the description. I may just do a blog post thing. Uh, yeah, in reset to ground because, and I'm probably broken record, in reset to ground because it's the two year MCU is trying to talk and it will talk at the same time you're trying to flash and it's just clashes. So you put it in a reset loop. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll put all that in there and everything in the jig and everything. Uh, yeah, you have to keep it grounded the whole time during flashing, by the way. So, um, yeah, sorry about that home. Uh, maybe we can hit, we can switch, switch, um, gears here. So when you pull up Lovelace, does, what does it do? What is it just totally blank or, I mean, what happens when you come over here and hit configure UI, um, yeah, de definitely hit me up on uh, on Discord, and uh, we can walk you through whatever this stuff. And if anybody else wants the link on Discord, um, and I can help you with the fan stuff. So, that wait, it works. So yeah, I'm not a huge. Um, I, I know a little bit about Lovelace stuff. I just don't use the UI that much. So, um, but. Um, The only issue, the device, oh, the devices list integrations. See, look, I got to dig for integrations. The devices list here. Oh, look at that. Mine. Oh, wait, there it goes. <laughs> I was going to say mine didn't work either. Now, the devices list are only, and mine took a little bit to come up, and this is on a VM running on, I think it's two core, two, maybe four cores out of the 12 on this server. So it should be pretty, that took a little bit to come up on the devices. Devices, I believe that's only going to be the devices that you did in a type of integration in. Um, so if they're not listed. Click on one, you can add the Lovelace. Okay, let's see. Um, let's do... I don't know what's on. It's, I can say this is a dev system. So I've got a lot of stuff I do not have in here anymore. Um, let's see. Let's just do that. Sh let's, it says Shelly 1 p.m. That's offline. Um, you can tell I do not do that that often. I know there was like an ad. ad oh, look, it's at the bottom. You can't see it. Let me drag it up. Add to Lovelace. All right, if I'm saying, I'm probably going to butcher your name, so I'm not even going to say it. Uh, Mukesh, you can bash me on Discord later if I butcher your name. Feel free to call me out. I don't mind it. Okay, so at choose a view, let's just do throw it in fans. And we'll just say add to Lovelace UI. Oh, oh, it's, it's red. It, oh, it was red there. Oh, now it wants to do a different card. Oh, so when you hit add to Lovelace, the choose a view doesn't come up. So do you have any views? Like, I don't know what it does if you don't have any views. And the views are, um these tabs here if i know if you come up here in okay you do hit configure ui and then so i'm sure you've probably tried to add another view right this thing is kind of laggy it's weird it didn't lag that much but maybe so it's unnamed view 
that's definitely weird. Now this, what I don't even know what version I'm on here. Um, oh, this is one. Oh, this is one one one. Y'all wanted to up, we were up, upgrade it. it. Sends a blank message from the site. Hmm. Let's see. Let's hit update on it. And let's see what happens. Well, we. It shouldn't take that long. Are you on one one two? That was just one 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 dot one, a bunch of ones. Everybody's gonna be hounding me for the uh, fan controllers. Boiler boy, boiler boy is. Um, yeah, we'll see what happens on it. Of course, everything's slow. It's it's Murphy's law that, by the way, every when you, you have multiple people waiting on something, it's always going to be slower. So that's just a little tip there. And then when you go to lot like do a live demo or something, it's not going to work like you did it the couple hours before either. So. So let's see what else. That was pretty much all I had when to kind of show, um, yeah, especially that your boss and your demo and something. Um, I, I wanted to show it was the fan fan controller dimmer and then um, then how to do your Shelly stuff with no fla uh, flash your Shellys without any GPIO pin usage. Oh, that's probably why this update's taking a while. I was wondering why it was taking that long. I still have it's just a dev copy though, uh, but I guess I have a bunch of sensors in there, and it's probably bogging things down. Oh, there we go. Because I was like, normally the upgrade don't take that long, so we should and make sure. Yep, no upgrade configuration. See, I always forget everything is. I never forget. I always forget where everything is is at now. Oh, look, they moved. Where they moved the info thing? Where'd they move that to? Server can. Oh, look, right there. Interesting. A constant. Uh, yeah, you, you know what that's for, right? Why they keep doing that is is they want to keep invalidating um youtube creator videos right just, let's just move it here and we'll just really screw up people no I, I know they don't do that but it's just i think it's funny uh, that always happens um let's see let's go to we can go to devices And we'll try to do the same thing. Let's just do this KMC thing here. And we'll hit add to Lovelace. Yeah, I know it's offline. Right, it does come up with the V. Now, because I have an unnamed one, it's this blank down here. Let's see. Let me pick it. Um, let's see. Add to Lovelace. I wonder if, there it go. It did, it did that. It seems to be working here. But I know that doesn't help you a lot, uh, help, you, help you at all, actually. Um, something specific to your system for some reason, because that's just supposed to be how it works. Um, you know, it just throws in everything when you just say add the love lace and the little view thing comes up. Um, I wonder if you could maybe try making another, because I know it lets you make another love lace dashboard. Maybe try making another Lovelace dashboard um, and see if that will help. Yeah, you can go in here. Yeah, I would try, just give this a shot. Go to Lovelace dashboard and make you another Lovelace dashboard. I don't know what it does when you make another one. I've made another one, but I never tried to add anything to it. I guess it's going to ask you for um, which dashboard to put it on. 
and there's no views on this. Well, well, I, never, never mind. There's all the stupid badges. It reminds me of the old days um, when everything would just pop on the before. I don't know. We'll try it. Devices. I've got two now. This is this is a test system. So if we blow it up, we blow it up. I don't care. Um, let's throw this guy up here. Add to Lovelace. Oh, look! It's just asking. It's doing the default view. It doesn't even. It, it's not doing the uh, the overview one. Hmm. I wonder what happens if you change, can you change the order of them? I wonder if it has something to do with, but still should come up and ask you. It should show the default one, I would, I would think. Let's see. Set as default on this device. Update. All right. Where'd my other one go? I guess it's not showing in the thing. I don't know. Um, see, I get lost now on where everything's at. I need to use it more. I, I, I just don't use the GUI a lot. It's more, oh, it makes it disappear. Add to Lovelace. It's still using the default one. It's not putting the... Look at that. Hmm. I wonder if it's something with that... I wonder if it's going because the order. So, um... I know there's the old way. You can just go in and make you a card and then go... I know it's kind of a pain, but go in and put your card and then just start typing in the, the sensors, make an entity card or something. Um... Yeah, I would definitely, if you're not, maybe try to open up a issue or something like that on uh, GitHub and see if anybody else is having that same issue or try, um, is anybody else having an issue? I, I'm, I'm not sure if something specific to yours. I'm not sure what it exactly is. So, very weird. All right, well, sorry I'm struck out on that one. I didn't, ha didn't have a, uh, a solid answer on that. Um, I have a problem running instance of HA on a network without, actually, I did hear, where did I hear that at? I was, it was on one of the, the, the podcast, I think that they were doing the onboarding would not let you pick the map because the map needed an internet connection. So you couldn't do your latitude longitude. And now because they took that out of YAML, well, then you couldn't pick it anyway. But I think that was the only issue. You should it should be fine. Um, I guess I don't know. I've never tried it without internet. Would it, did it try to? Does it need to update any libraries or anything? I just I don't know. Never tried that, Red Eye Joe. Um, you added my fan controller to you. It works in there and integrated to you. Yeah, it will not. <laughs> it will not. I'll show you what it does. I tried that. Um, just on a whim, I tried, um, the fan controller is I went and added it. I can never find the integrations. I went and added it to, to you. And it puts it just as Wi-Fi smart switch. And that's it. There's no entities. I don't think there, there's no dimmer. There's no fan. There's nothing. Um, I, I guess it's because of uh, just, I, and don't quote me on this, just some of the stuff I've heard and read that they made, the Tuya guys made that server that Home Assistant hooks to. And those people with the Tuya company are no longer with the company because of churn, I guess. And 
that's some of the reason why I've saw that they had issues with the uh, like you can't change the color on cloud light bulbs and stuff without really some crazy changes. Um, and so I'm assuming I, I, I would not hold your breath on this, on you being able to add the fan switch dimmer and just get it to work in the cloud in the home assistant configuration. You'd have to do something else you want to do it in the cloud. Um, but of course there's always throw Tasmoto on it. Um, yeah, I, I've just never tried that red eye. So, um, what do they need their own chip? Why? Oh, what do they need their own chip alongside the ESP? Well, for one, there are what? Eight or nine, there's eight or nine LEDs across the top. There's eight or nine. So if you did like, um, let's just take a Wemos D1, the Wemos D1 Mini or something. Uh, ESP8266. This is a site I always like to use. Is... You can see for the GPIO pins, if they want to use LEDs that for those LEDs, if they want to hook them straight to um, the GPIO pins, they would be like, you're just like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's about a ten or eleven, and there are some constraints, and I'm not going to get into and bore you there, but there's about ten or eleven GPIO pins to use. Well, you, if there's eight, well, then you just, now you have three GPIO pins left. Well, then you need a relay for the, you know, you need the, the say you did PWM for dimmer. That's two left, I think, if I'm doing, I lost count already. Then you need the two LEDs for the fan and there you've run it, you've run out of GPIO pins. So they could do some sort of GPIO expander. Well, they just don't. They, and because then they want all these animations and everything. So that's why they do that other little chip to do like special functions. And there's a lot of different devices that use that to your MCU. Um, there's, there, there's everything from uh, fans, there's dimmers. Um, let's see, I'm probably bore you, they bore you on this. I know they had like a list. There's one of these aromatherapy diffusers because they got all kind of stuff in here with the LED colors and how much oil it's putting out. Um, you just run out of GPIO pins. There's a curtain motor has them. Power, some power monitoring plugs have them. I haven't run into. Dehumidifier. There's some, light, there's some lights. There's a contact sensor. The air purifiers. There's all kinds of stuff that had the kettle, thermostats. I mean, you go on and on and on and on. Because the way the Tuya MC, the Tuya MCU works with the ESP, just think the ESP chip is just a Wi-Fi modem. And that's really about it. It may hold the state of some of those things, but other than that, it's really about it. So it allows them to do a lot of stuff. So, and that's where, if you get, and that's where I really were, if you have a new device with, um, that you haven't, no one's done anything with, I really like, and I've done some of my previous live streams where we flash to it and flash the, we don't flash to it, I'm talking wrong. I hook up the wires to it and do serial sniffing so I can see all the exact packets that the stock firmware does because that helps reverse engineer the um, stuff. Like this is some of my, you can see some of my notes of when I was doing this probably last weekend is I was sniffing the packets that from the ESP 8266 to the MCU, there's the heartbeat packet uh, what happens when the light turns on, the turn light turns off, the fan goes on, there's the speeds, what packets are sent back, what, what type does the dimmer use? Um, 
And then there's actual dimming modes, which I haven't really gotten into yet. Uh, there's some dimming ranges through packets. And then you flip flop it the other way. I want to look at what it looks like when it boots, what it takes to set it up. Um, and then this is states coming back from the coming from the MCU to the ESP chip. And so these were like different response states of like the speed changing or like if someone was pushing the buttons on the faceplate. So how would you interpret those states like the dimmer uh, pushed reset on the button and watched it boot. And, you know, this is just all my notes because once I flashed it really hot, I guess you can flash the firmware back. I did back it up, but I want to get everything out of the stock to your app. So, um, and that's really how I did the very first dimmer. I'm looking at the year here. I think it was 2018 ish or so the first video I did of uh, when I brought dimming in the Taz Moto was kind of bootleg, but I did it with those serial packets and had a dimmer. And we just had like one dimmer inside uh, Taz Moto and it's come a long way since then. So, um, but other than that, that's my rant. Anything else? I can talk forever, I'm sure. Well, if that's, um, yeah, that's my old, um, reminisce video and it's, I, it's, I still have it up. So don't, don't, um, don't laugh at me too bad. I did not know what I was doing and, uh, it's, 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 I, I put it up there. It's, it's several people's fault and Doc's one of them. So. <laughs> no, we will not talk about that, Jimmy. <laughs> I've, I don't know if you've noticed, we've, I've not talked about that one. It's, always, it's the escape. Um, so, yeah. Actually, well, it was, it was one year, it said one year ago? Oh, no, it was, it was uh, September 2018 I put that one up there. So, yeah. So, um, I don't even know if you can get this dimmer in... I don't even know if you can get that dimmer anymore. So, yeah, so it's pretty, um, pretty cool. When we did, I did uh, dimmer, and I tell it was some of the code I had to do and stuff, and that that's all changed now. Um, yeah, it was I want to say Oidum was kind of treat life. So, um, yeah, and I still have that dimmer on the other side of this room, by the way. So. Um, yeah, now that's definitely, ha the code has definitely changed. Uh, Shin Tour, I think it is, if I'm saying it correctly. He came in and really brought the Tuya MCU like to the next level. So, um, what about ESP32? For Tuya doing ESP32? Or Tasmodo ESP32? I want to show y'all something else too. Why we, um, why are you talking? Why I'm... So I haven't seen a whole lot of movement lately. I, I do think Frederico fixed the bug we found on the live stream not long after. Um, I haven't seen a whole lot of change on ESP32 stuff um, on the commits. But there was a recent commit I saw with um, the Sonoff. I know that it was, it's, we were talking about today, S, it's supposed to be S on off. How you say it? That's so, such a struggle to say that. Um, oh, Federico's still there. So, I mean, yeah, there, ESP32 does work for Tasmoto. Um, and there are those binaries. And I did, if you want to roll back, in the last, if you can't find, I did a lot of links and stuff in there. The last, um, and that's a struggle to say that, Jimmy. I said it just on, out of, it's not spite, but I might still call it Sonoff, um, like everybody else does. 
is uh do, 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 there there's Zigbee Sonoff Bridge that Stefan has been working his tail off on that thing. That dude, I will tell you, um he's he did a lot of the the Zigbee stuff in Tasmoda and it it's he's he's definitely I'm looking for his commit on there. But he's done a lot of stuff on the Zigbee side of um uh, Yeah, it it does work. I think it's like adventures with Zig yeah, Sonoff Zigbee. And I want to show you. He rode in here. He's right here. Um he's able to get some stuff working. I know it's very probably very alpha of connecting and um working with that uh Sonoff Zigbee bridge. So it'd be pretty cool once it is completed and that we can just buy off the shelf uh the Son the Sonoff Zigbee bridge because it's not that expensive and not have to do any like crazy building of boards and cases and it's just plug it in USB and go. Um yeah, I think Sonoff did it did did accept that. Um I'm I'm trying to make Tasmoda accept mine, but they're not listening for some reason. So I'm I've got to get Fred Rico on that. So yeah, so the ESP32 is cool. Um if you want to and you don't feel like going back and looking at my uh long live stream. There are, I think Black Adder does these. I think, was it the, no, it was, uh, it's, it's in a different spot. Hold up. I'll leave the link here. I f you have to go to the main Tasmoda page, change the branch to firmware. And if you go to the firmware and there's Tasmoda 32 and there's Tasmoda 32 firmwares already built for you. And that way you don't have to go in through and build them, but do pay attention. They're looking the, there's a ESP 32 needed files and you'll need to copy those in. And then they do have instructions on how to use ESP tool to flash it. So it's not for the faint at heart, but if you know what you're doing, then um, and just follow this a little bit. You can flash. It's not hard. You can flash your ESP32 with Tasmodo. So, um, yeah, there's nothing wrong with building yourself as well. So, that's probably a team that wanted it to be S on all. Yeah, it's. I could see the name, but then um, we were talking. What we were talking about earlier, how to pronounce to you. I think they were saying it was what the. They were saying Tuya or something or too 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 high or something. I forgot how they were saying it. But it was I think they found a video and it was actually saying Tuya, but then they were saying how they spelled said modules. But then they got into a whole debate on other stuff, but that's whatever. I don't speak English to correct anyway myself. So Yeah, the other one is that that and I even watched a little video on it, that Dahua or whatever. The Dahua camera. So, um, all right, everybody, it's been way longer than I expected, but that's fine. I don't have work tomorrow and hopefully many of you guys or gals or whatever don't, we don't have any other questions, burning questions. If you got any help, need help with the dim fan dimmer or whatever else, uh, yeah, that, that, no, I'm not going to do it. I watched a little video on it. <laughs> I'll watch it again. <laughs> it's actually a pretty cool video. They went around trying to get everybody to how to pronounce it. And everybody was screwing it up. So uh, Google, look for it on YouTube. It's kind of funny. So, all right, well, that's it. And I will put every, I'll try to get everything in there somewhere this evening. So, um, that's it. All right. Y'all take care. Thanks.